Guys, in this video, we're going to learn how to upload files and attachments in WordPress, how to write codes for them, uh, how to upload the image in the upload folders uh, directory of WordPress, and then how to insert into database, how to connect the uh, post ID with that particular attachment, how to display it on the front end. So it's going to be all about attachments, uploading files and dealing with uh, file uploads in WordPress. In fact, multiple file uploads in WordPress. So this is going to be a little bit long video. Um, so just bear with me. And uh, it's going to be a little bit complex. Uh, however, um, I promise you that if you are with me and you follow along uh, and probably watch the video a couple of times if you don't understand, then you'll be able to uh, understand this easily. Okay, so let's begin. So uh, I'm starting from where I left in my previous video tutorial series. In the previous video, we learned how to uh, create input elements into the form, how to submit it, store it in the database, uh, into the user meta. Um, and now we're going to just create a couple of um, input elements for the file uploads. So let's say I want to uh, I want the user's profile image, and I also want him to upload some of his uh, past work images in case if he was working somewhere else in case if he has some certificates PDF files and if he wants to upload that so uh, let's let's go ahead and do that so I'm going to create two input elements so you can just ignore these uh, grayed out part uh, I'm going to explain that to you a little bit later but I've just added two labels one is this and second one is this one so the first one is a profile picture um, input type is equal to file uh, name is user profile pic and ID is user profile pic as well. So let's just copy this, paste it, <coughs> copy this, paste it. <coughs> okay, and um, so make sure that the type is file for the input element in order for it uh, to be able to upload files and make sure that the form has another attribute called ink type multipart form data if you don't use this then you won't be able to deal with files file uploads so make sure that you go to the form element and just to define an attribute ink type and the value should be multipart form data okay great now coming back to uh, the code where we had written is set post submit and this is what we did last time we inserted the uh, hobby and age into into the database under the user meta key, user hobby and user age. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to need some of the um, information uh, in order for us to store this uh, into database. So the first thing we need is basically uh, the post ID. So we want to create a particular post for this user so that we can uh, you know link our attachment to that particular post. Uh, so for this user, we'll create a post into the normal post. Uh, so before we do that, let's just get the username. So in order for us to uh, get to know the username, uh, all you have to do is call a WordPress function, which is wp get current user, and then access its property. It returns an object. Uh, it has a property of display name, and then you're going to get the user display name with that. If you just go ahead and echo that. Uh, sure enough, uh, you can see that you've got the uh, profile pic. Um, basically, this is the input element to choose the file. It allows you to select any particular files from here. And password, also, you can go ahead and select any file. Okay, and uh, obviously, the we want to echo the username. So just let's just comment out the redirection so that we can see what's going on submit it and you can see that admin is the username uh, basically so if you go over here to users browse and user login basically this is a username admin okay so we want the username to create a post in that username okay so let's get rid of username the next thing we want to do is basically create a function that would allow us to uh, create a post uh, for this particular user uh, and uh, update it in case if it already exists. So I'm going to create a variable post ID and I'm going to call a function which I'm going to define just in a moment. 
and WF create update user post and I'm gonna need to pass these information like user ID user display name and uh, the post status as well okay so whether you want that post to be submit uh, sorry published or pending okay so I'm just gonna copy paste this function just to ensure that it saves time so it's W F is the prefix create update user post here is my function I'm just gonna copy that <coughs> and just below this I'll just paste it okay so I'll show you what's going on over here so in this function uh, we take user ID user display name post status and things like that um, ignore this a bit we don't need that in fact um, okay let's keep it there okay so what we're doing over here is that we are trying to get users meta with the user custom post meta key uh, so basically we're saying that if we have stored uh, any value inside the user custom post uh, meta key then get its value so why we're taking over this over here is because later on in the code we are actually going to um, you know uh, create a meta key user custom post meta key and we're going to set its value to the new post ID that has just been created okay so that is why we are checking that if we have already set the value of the user meta key uh, to be the uh, post ID then get me that post ID so that I can check whether I want to uh, insert a new post uh, create a new post basically or update the existing one okay so this is going to return a post ID so in the first go in the very first time it happens obviously this will not have any values because this is not created yet so this will be empty because it will be empty this condition will not be met so it will go in the else condition in the else condition uh, basically we are going to use our WordPress function which is WP insert post uh, so if you go on to codex and if you check WP insert post <clears throat> okay I think I've decided to break the video into parts I don't want the video to be too long so let's learn so WP insert post uh, basically so this inserts or updates a post it takes the post array which is the array of arguments ID author date uh, content and things like that and it takes WP error is equal to false whether you want to return an error or not whether to return a WP error or failure or not okay so in our case uh, we're gonna set that to uh, sorry yeah WP insert false by default it's anyways false so we don't want the WP error to be uh, you know displayed or returned so we're gonna pass this array of arguments because we need these array of arguments to be passed to insert the post first is the post author we already have the user ID remember that we got the user ID on top itself user ID get current user ID okay uh, then we need the user display name so remember we've just got the user display name using WP get current user and we've got admin inside of it then the post status so we passing the post status pending because we don't want this to be approved until admin approves it and post content is now we don't want anything in the post content post name will be the same as the uh, user display name and we're using the sanitized text field just for, for the sanitization purposes um, sorry we are looking at the wrong place this is where we need to be looking at okay great so basically this is pending and um, the first time it is pending of course uh, then we're going to use this function pass this array of arguments so this is going to go ahead and insert a new post and it's going to return us the post ID uh, for the post that is created okay and then at the same time uh, we're going to use the function that we had defined it remember in my previous video I had explained this function already to you that this job of this function is to create a new meta key uh, and set its value to the given to the past value if it already exists and just update the value of that particular meta key and return true okay so that's what's happening over here we are creating a new meta key user custom post if it already exists then just update it uh, otherwise create a new one and set its value to the post ID the reason why we are doing this is because when we go ahead and upload our attachments 
um, we would need the parent post ID and we will always be able to get that from the database because we would have created a post ID for that particular user user we would have created a post for that particular user and we can easily get the post ID because we had saved that in the user meta okay great so if we go ahead and just save it okay and we'll just do safe redirect now if I go ahead and refresh the page okay there's something wrong it seems okay nothing so if I go ahead and submit it here obviously I've not selected any pictures yet but that's okay if I submit the form it's basically um, besides what was going on over here now the post will be created for this particular user with this username and user ID and post status will be pending so let's submit the form let's go to uh, our post because we selected the post type as post if you remember post type is post so if I refresh the page I should have a post created over here under the post section for this particular user with his username so refresh the page and sure enough you've got the admin name as the post title because that's what we created post title is the user display name and user is admin yep user is admin and then um, basically you've got it pending so you've got the post and if you check the database go to posts refresh and sure enough you've got the admin and this is the post created this is a revision basically this way this is our post which is status is pending so the post is 96 now remember what's happening over here is basically um, the first time this function is called uh, at the very bottom over here when, when you when the user hits the submit button it comes over here, it checks, does the meta key has a value? Uh, this particular meta key has a value. If it is, then it will return the post ID. Under the first situation, it will not have any post ID. So it'll skip this, it'll come to this condition, it will insert the post, it will get me the post ID. So basically, this is going to get me this post ID, uh, which is post 97. Um, and it's going to return the post ID. If you want to just go ahead and uh, echo out this post ID, you will notice that you'll get the okay let's just comment this out go over here refresh the page submit it and sure enough you get the post 96 and that's what it is it's pending this is 96 post this is the one we talk about and even if you come here hover over it and just notice at the very bottom when you hover over it it's post is equal to 96 yes great so which means that um, we've got the post ID um, that's been created and uh, we've also set up the meta key if you remember over here we also calling the, our custom function and job of that function is to set the value of this meta key which is a custom meta key to the new post ID that's been created so it's a post number 96 so if you go to uh, WP user meta and if you look for the user custom post you can see that the meta value is 96 so that's the post ID that's been created brilliant the very next time what happens is um, it comes over here if we, if we submit it the next time and if the posts already exist then what will happen is that it will go back to the same function it will check get user meta uh, user custom post so obviously this will have this value post number 96 which means that this condition will be met and this is just going to uh, use the WP update post which is a uh, the uh, WordPress function which is just going to update the uh, post with the post ID and the post uh, title and status and things like that yeah so great so if you go ahead and submit it even if you refresh the page you won't see nothing what happened is because 
it will still be the same it won't actually create a new post if you don't check this condition then each time the user submits the form this is uh, going to create a new post we don't want that to happen and which is why we are actually using WP update post and not a WP, uh, WP insert post so that's why we are storing this value into a meta key into the database the very first time the post is created we're getting the post ID storing it in under this meta key so that we check the condition if it already exists and don't create new one just update the existing one okay great uh, so in this video we learn how to create a new post um, for the um, for a particular user okay uh, under the post section and in the next video we're going to learn how to go ahead and uh, upload the uh, attachments uh, basically into the uploads folder okay see you then